how to wake up early even if you're not a morning person. I can attribute most of my personal growth over the last two years to this one habit of waking up at 5 a.m. every single day. It has been a complete game changer to my life and has put me on a whole new trajectory. So if you're trying to get ahead in life, it all starts with the morning. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through my step-by-step -step process on waking up early every single day and starting the day on a good note. Just quickly, if you're new here, my name is Luke and I make videos on productivity, fitness, philosophy, and basically anything else I'm interested in. It's my goal to help you and me live up to our full potentials and I hope that my videos can do just that. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first things first, the alarm. I randomly stumbled across a very specific application on my phone that has basically meant I have never slept in once from my alarm since downloading this app. So what's this app? It's called Alarmy. And this app has one very, very cool feature that pretty much makes it impossible to sleep in through your alarm. If I go into the app, go onto my alarm, you can see that there's different missions. So you need some kind of paid version to have multiple missions, but all you really need is just one. As you can see, I've got one and it's set to a barcode slash QR code. Pretty much what this barcode is, is the barcode on the back of my soap bottle in my bathroom. So what this means is when my alarm goes off in the morning, the only way that I can turn off the alarm is by taking my phone and going into the bathroom and scanning that barcode. That is the only way to turn off the alarm. This might sound really extreme, but trust me, it works. You literally cannot sleep in because I'm already out of my room. I'm at my bathroom. So to set this up for yourself, you simply just need to set up an alarm on that app. And then under the mission section, you select barcode and then go find a barcode somewhere in your house on any kind of product or item. Just make sure that item isn't going to get thrown out or anything. And you just simply calibrate that mission to need that specific barcode in order to turn off. I recommend something that's outside of your room so you actually have to get up out of bed and go travel somewhere to turn off the alarm. I honestly can't describe how much of a game changer this one app has been to my ability to wake up at 5 a.m. consistently over the last two years. So if nothing else from this video, go download that one app and it'll be a game changer for you. But so yeah, pretty much that's the one app that I use that's changed everything. I have my phone on my desk across from my bed so that I still have to get out of bed anyway just to reach my phone. And then as I was saying, I then take my phone to the bathroom in order to turn off the alarm. And then once I'm in the bathroom, this segues very nicely into the next part of the morning, which is the morning routine. So I'm gonna go through the exact things that I do to wake up feeling energized and ready to attack the day and to avoid feeling sluggish in the morning. So first things first, as soon as I've turned off the alarm in the bathroom, I hop straight into the shower. Cold exposure is without a doubt one of the best things you can do to fire up your system immediately. No, it's not comfortable. Yes, it sucks quite a bit in the morning, but man, does it wake you up and get you going. So for me personally, I usually spend around two to three minutes taking a cold shower first thing in the morning. And the main key with this is you don't wanna start the shower warm and then slowly transition it to cold. You want to stand under the shower, have it set to full cold and just turn it on. The whole point is that we have this huge shock factor. That's the thing that just dumps heaps of adrenaline and dopamine into our system that fires us up and gets us ready to go. Now, I understand this can be a huge kind of fear and something that many people don't want to do at all. What I recommend is think of it the same way as you'd approach the gym. Start small and then progress up. So what you wanna do is start with just literally one second. Stand under the shower, turn the water on full cold for just one second and then turn it off. Just by doing that, you'll still get the immense shock factor, but it's just for one second. That's pretty reasonable. You could probably do that. And then over time, you just keep increasing the amount of time that you can stand under the water. Again, the main thing is that we just have that shock 
from the cold water first thing in the morning. So then after that, I go into around three to five minutes of meditation. I used to leave meditation for later in the day because I tried to prioritize work and other things first thing in the morning. However, I'd often find that I just end up forgetting or skipping it. Something would come up and I would just miss days and days sometimes weeks of meditating. So that's why I now include it as a part of my morning routine. It only takes three to five minutes, so it's not very long. I just, I sit on my bed, close my eyes. I sometimes use like a guided meditation app, but most of the time I'm just sitting in silence, focusing on my breath. And so lastly, after I've done the little bit of meditation, I go straight into doing some gratitude journaling and reviewing my plan for the day ahead. This really just helps set the mood, gets me into a positive mindset and allows me to see what kind of tasks and goals I'm gonna be working towards for the day. So overall, this morning routine, it takes probably around 20 minutes from waking up. And then after that, I'm ready to get straight to work. I find this is a very nice, minimalistic morning routine that really gets you ready and primed for the day ahead, but it's not some crazy two hour long morning routine. So I've found that this is a nice kind of balance between the two. All right, next thing I wanna talk about is improving sleep. I know this video is meant to be about waking up in the morning. However, if you can improve your quality of sleep, it'll make the process of waking up feel so much easier. Now, obviously we all know that the quantity of sleep is extremely important, but I'm sure you don't wanna hear me just say, get more sleep. So I just wanna run through a couple quick things to help improve the actual quality of sleep so that the sleep you are getting, which is hopefully, you know, eight to nine hours, is actually of better quality. So one of the biggest things that I've found to help improve my quality of sleep is to avoid eating meals or eating any food in general within two, but ideally three hours of sleeping. When I eat food really close to when I'm gonna go to sleep, I feel it has a massive impact on how well I sleep. Obviously the problem here is that the body is trying to redirect lots of its energy to continue digesting the food that you've just eaten. This is why you want to try space out that time between your last meal and going to sleep. Another thing is if you're often finding yourself waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom once or even more times, you want to try reduce drinking any fluids within around two hours of going to sleep. This means you've got to be pretty aware and on top of your hydration throughout the day so that you're not getting to the very end of the day when you're about to go to sleep and feeling really dehydrated. You wanna be having a consistent good amount of water throughout the day so that you can cut off your fluid intake around two hours before bed. The last thing that has a huge impact on our ability to sleep properly is reducing the amount of light that's hitting our eyes leading up to bedtime. Around an hour to maybe two hours before going to bed, you wanna really start turning off as many lights as you can within the house. If you plan on using your devices, you can turn on a red color filter, which red is the lowest wavelength light there is, which means it will affect your sleep the least. So if you just go into the settings app on Apple, you can turn on color filters and this will basically make your whole screen very, very red. It looks very ugly, but it will have a very low impact on your sleep. Another thing you can do is download a software on your MacBook that's called Flux. This software is extremely powerful at reducing down the amount of blue light that's gonna be emitted from the screen. This means if you really need to use your computer before going to bed, it will have a very little impact on your sleep. All right, just lastly, I'm gonna run through a few bonus tips that can really help optimize your morning routine for maximum productivity. So first things first is the exact opposite of what we want to be doing at night is we want to be turning on as many lights as we possibly can. Ideally, we wanna be looking at sunlight if possible, but if it's too early for that, we wanna be turning on as many bright lights as possible. Pretty much what this is gonna do is it's gonna help regulate our natural daily cortisol release in our body, which put simply, this just helps regulate our wakefulness and sleepiness at the proper times. Next thing we ideally want to be doing is not eating for the first few hours of the day. This will massively improve our ability to concentrate on the work that we're trying to do. So pretty much you wanna wake up, do the morning routine, and then get straight to your most important work 
completely fasted because one of the biggest problems with eating food is as soon as you start eating food, your body's needing to redirect blood flow to your gut to help digest the food. This means it's moving away from your brain, which is ideally what you need if you're doing cognitive tasks. And lastly, please, 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 don't use your phone first thing in the morning. Stay off your phone, don't start scrolling, don't check notifications. This is going to completely mess up your dopamine levels and make it extremely hard to get into deep work afterwards. Ideally, after you've done your morning routine and you're trying to do some deep work, you want to keep your phone in another room. Don't even have it in the room with you because it can just be that much of a distraction for us, even me. And lastly, if you are gonna keep your phone in the area, please just turn off notifications. You don't need it buzzing and binging when you're trying to work. So that's it. This is my system for getting up early every single day and attacking life head on. This simple habit of waking up early every single day has had the biggest change on my life. And I really hope that you can implement some of these things I've mentioned. If you'd like a written protocol of everything I've mentioned in this video, you can check out a free download for that down in the description below. I hope you've got a lot of value out of this video. And just lastly, I wanna leave you with this. The magic you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding. I'll see you in the next one, bro.